when we're thinking about these risks, we can take a lot of preventative actions, and we know of what a lot of them are um, in terms of well, where we put things, how we build things, how we respond to risks of extreme events. But it's not evenly distributed. So there's parts of Australia and parts of the world where even though we know how we could, say, build a house which is cyclone-proof for various reasons, including economic reasons, those people can't do it. Or the type of house that we might build in, say, a place like Fiji doesn't correspond with the needs of those people culturally or it may not correspond with the climate that they experience. So it may be quite inappropriate for a, a hot and wet climate. And so, so just because we have some of the solutions don't mean they're applicable or even if they're applicable, whether they actually get implemented. And so we don't have all of the answers for all of the places uh, which suffer from significant natural hazards. And of course, increasingly with climate change, uh, we're seeing those impacts of climate change affecting different areas. So our Pacific neighbours, of course, are, are right at the forefront of climate change with higher sea levels, um, increasing storminess, so we're getting more of the extreme cyclones. And that puts them right in the front line of impacts of climate change. And so again, even though we know how to reduce that risk, which is by reducing our greenhouse gas emissions, we're not necessarily doing that at the degree and at the rate which actually reduces those risks for the Pacific Islands. Individually, and as families and as communities, there's lots of things we can do to manage risk. But it really depends on our circumstances as how we do that. So for example, if you lived on a farm, the way you'd manage this is very different from if you lived in a suburb. Uh, if you live in, say, South Australia, the way you manage it is very different from if you lived in Cairns. And so, so it has to be contextual, it has to be dependent on your circumstances, and it has to depend on the particularities of your own individual or community situation. So, for example, if you uh, haven't got a lot of money, then the way in which you may manage risk may be different from if you're actually um, cashed up. And so uh, it, it, it's a very sort of rich sort of scenario that we have to deal with, and there's no one size fits all. But one of the ways we can do this is just looking at what we do individually and, and how we can change things. So uh, obviously in a fire prone area, it's about developing a fire management plan. So if there is a fire coming, we're actually already prepared uh, to manage that. Um, so either stay and defend, which was one of the old ways of doing it, but in extreme circumstances, that's a real problem. We need to get out of the way and let the firefighters and, and the aeroplanes with the um, big you know, dumpings of water and, and uh, fire retardants in because they're the ones that can deal with those extreme circumstances, not us as individuals. So we can do those sorts of things, um, but in the case, say, of climate change, we can also change our patterns of behaviour to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. And again, there's lots and lots of ways we can do this. Um, in my family, what we do is we, we ride our bikes where we can. I, I ride my bike to work every day. I would drive to work perhaps once or twice a year, and, uh, and so I reduce those emissions. Uh, we've got 28 solar panels on our roof and a battery uh, to, to capture as much sunlight and use that as we can. Uh, we grow a lot of our own food. We have a very productive vegetable patch with two different hydroponic systems, and we grow fruit. Uh, we can that and we bottle that and make jams and we distribute that all around the neighbourhood and around our workplaces. And so, so many people benefit from um, our activities to reduce uh, that food footprint. And, and that's not to say that works for everyone because not everyone can do all of those things. Um, but in our individual circumstance, that's what we like to do and that's uh, you know, a way of spreading the ideas about uh, reducing footprint much more bright um, broadly than we otherwise would be able to. So I think um, a lot of this is actually looking about what your values are. What are the things that are really important to, to you as an individual or as a family? And, and then figuring out what are some of the really simple first steps that, that make you feel good and actually have a benefit to the environment and reduce your risk at the same time.